You were there when she gave this very, I call it historic speech in 1994, the National Prayer Breakfast before Bill and Hillary Clinton, then President Bill Clinton. And my understanding is you helped schedule that, that you helped make that happen. Yes. Sandy McMurtry and Jan Petrie, two Americans were very close to mother. Mm -hmm. We we were all in discussions about this trip and mother coming over. First of all, was her health good enough to come? Mm -hmm. Second of all... um, was she going to be used by the Clintons? And the prayer breakfast was not known for being really pro-Catholic, the National Prayer Black Breakfast. It was largely uh, contentious. They'd never work with Cardinal Hickey in Washington. So there were a lot. There was a subplot to all of that. Uh, but it worked out, and Mother was prepared for it and had written remarks, which she almost never did. I think twice in her life did she read a written speech. But was she that won- the Nobel Peace Prize and the Yeah, she breakfast. had notes at the podium for that. That's right. But every time else when she spoke, it was extemporaneous. Yeah, yeah. and she was uh, she was aware of the significance of this gathering, and she knew the president and vice president and their wives, and you know, she knew this was a big deal, and she accepted the invite. And I think they brought her thinking, oh, great, she's a celebrity, and she was. Mm. Uh, they weren't prepared for what she had to say that morning. You really think they didn't know that she'd come in swinging? Mm-hmm. Because think, because she was swinging at the Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech. Yep. She called abortion the greatest destroyer of peace, and she said it to the world at that time. Yep. And my understanding is when I've tracked her work, she was always very passionately pro-life in every encounter, public opportunity she had. So the fact that she was going to do that at the prayer breakfast, if you knew anything about her, I would think you would know she was going to do that. You you really think the the demo the pro aborts and the ruined Democrats were surprised by they wouldn't have her. come. <laughs> wow! If Clinton and Gore had known, that must have been a God thing, Jim. It that- must have been <laughs> that they were confused. That they I think they thought she would never have bad manners like that. And the amazing thing was she pulled it off. I mean, she spoke from her heart. She mm. sp- p- talked about how the evil of abortion. People interrupted the speech to stand up and applaud. A lot of them were doing it to stick it to the president and vice president, uh, which wasn't particularly Christian, you know, but but they were also uh, emphasizing what she was saying. Mm-hmm. And But yet Mother did it so lovingly. I mean, she didn't do it with the kind of scourge that you would sometimes mm-hmm. see someone give a bitter speech. You know, she said it as the truth. And she met with the Clintons afterwards, and she loved them. She truly did. She didn't she hated the sin, and she loved the sinner. And and a mother, with that morning, she was fearless. She spoke her peace. She wasn't afraid to say it. I just think the people there are so accustomed to the politic that you don't say this. It's bad manners to say this in a setting like this. That, you know, well, she wasn't a politician. You know, so she was going to speak the truth. What was well for context too for folks listening when she gave that speech? This was around the time when. President Clinton, then President Clinton was was vetoing the Partial Birth Abortion Act. So abortion was, you know, this is his 90s thing as president for eight years. He would he vetoed it, I think, four times. The act that would per- forbid partial birth abortions, the baby's half delivered, a viable baby. Mm. You're stabbing the neck, crushing the skull. I mean, really heinous, horrific, sick crime against a baby. And so there's the context, right? This is a very pro-abortion president. And she gave this pro-life speech at the prayer breakfast. I quote her own words in a lot of my speeches to Mm -hmm. this day. Hillary Clinton was in the room. I heard a report that Hillary Clinton pulled out a, um, Mrs. Clinton pulled out like a shopping list or a checklist of some kind and started taking notes as if she was trying to ignore the speech. I don't know Mm -hmm. if you've heard that. I don't, I didn't see her do that. I did Mm -hmm. see President Clinton keep picking up his cup of coffee that was empty and uh, pretending he was drinking it. Really? Because it was so uncomfortable. I mean, who, how dare she speak that way, you know, to power? So, yeah, I don't think they were prepared for that. And Mother didn't do it in a way to be mean and all. She simply, it's like what Jesus said. He said, the reason I was born and came in the world was to testify to the truth, to witness to the truth. That's what Mother was doing that day. Wasn't going to change a vote, probably anybody in that room. But, uh, and she actually met Mrs. Clinton later, and I'd write about it in the book. And Mrs. Clinton led the delegation to Mother's funeral. Uh, So it was complicated. Mother Mm -hmm. had an impact in the lives of individuals that you wouldn't think would care two wits about her. So that was the unique thing about Mother was her appeal. And so when she met with Hillary Clinton after the speech, do you know what their conversation was? I don't. The president and Mrs. Clinton uh, met privately with Mother and a woman, Sandy McMurtry, uh, and one sister was there. But I did see Mother right after the, that meeting. She came back to the convent. Mary and I were there with uh, our son, Jamie. 
who now works at Aging with Dignity. And um, uh, and I just said, Mother, how was I was dying to know, you mm-hmm. know, what was said, how did it go, you know? Well, with Mother, you listen to what she didn't say mm-hmm. as much as what she said. And uh, Mother just said, pray for Mrs. Clinton. And that's what she said. And, and this was years before the scandal. And I'm not sure what all that led Mother to say that, but that's all she said. Uh, so, yeah. Well, you know, Mother also defended life at the end of life, too, you know, mm-hmm. and was very courageous about that. And I'm mm-hmm. sure she'd be mortified now by the, the assisted suicide euthanasia movement that's now catching momentum all over the world. And uh, But she had their home for the dying to witness to the sanctity mm-hmm. of life at the end, too. When you were uh, following and learning and helping Mother Teresa for the 12 years you spent with her, uh, you were sharing before the show that she also had a really big role to play in your personal life, obviously your faith life, but also your vocation to marriage. Can you share more about that? Yeah, she had, she had sent me, I write about it in detail again in the book, but she she sent me to Tijuana, Mexico to live with the MC Father.